Well, we're also tracking heavy flooding in Monterey County. KPIX 5's Devin Feely is there. But first, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan. Still scattered showers across much of the Bay Area. More gaps in between those showers. And as we head through this evening and tonight, the showers are going to be spaced out a little bit more. They're gradually going to become lighter, and we should be able to wrap up the influence of this storm system by about mid-morning tomorrow. But still some heavy rain falling, especially the South Bay. Santa Clara County, particularly to the east and southeast of San Jose, that's where the heaviest rain has been falling over the past several hours. And it's still falling right now around Morgan Hill and down well, a little break around Gilroy, but some heavier rain just to the north north of Gilroy once you get up in elevation just a little bit and still some more showers farther down in Santa Cruz County as well. We'll pan farther north and a break in the action for San Francisco. Even some sun peeking through the clouds for the East Bay. Just a few light showers until you get farther inland. The Tri Valley is picking up some heavier shower activity right now and for the North Bay. The showers are pretty few and far between and this is the kind of trend that we're going to see as we head deeper into this evening and tonight. The activity is going to be slowly pushing off to the east and slowly becoming less intense as we head through the evening and overnight hours. The big picture perspective though shows the influence of this atmospheric river sending abundant moisture inland including into the high Sierra and we add up the rain that has fallen already with the radar. This radar estimated rainfall and you can pick out the bullseyes over Santa Cruz and Santa Clara counties but even heavier amounts farther down into our south, including around Carmel, which is why they had such significant issues there. We'll take a look at how much rain we expect as we head through the rest of tonight, and we'll look at the next chance of rain headed our way in just a few minutes. All right, Paul, thank you. Well, cleanup is underway in Carmel after the rain-swollen Carmel River overwhelmed an Oceanside Lagoon and spilled into a neighborhood. KPIX 5 reporter Devin Feely is there now with the aftermath. Devin? Well, as you can see, the floodwaters, thankfully, have receded from this neighborhood. Now, at its worst, Cal Fire says at its highest, those floodwaters were easily knee or thigh high. And even though they were only around for a couple of hours, the cleanup is going to take considerably longer than that. This dramatic drone video shows the extent of the flooding in the Carmel Lagoon neighborhood, with several feet of floodwaters inundating the hardest hit homes. She said there's two men at the front door and they want us to get in a boat and go to safety. John Hammerlin woke to the news that the lagoon was spilling into his neighborhood. The rapidly rising floodwaters had climbed his driveway, crept into his garage, and were now threatening his home itself. It came uh, within this amount, six or seven inches of this here, our deck, our house. John says the floodwaters began to recede before reaching his house. He was lucky. His neighbors across the street were not. They recorded this video as water seeped into their backyard and into their homes. You know, hopefully nothing got ruined too much. Sue Wolfmeyer lives about a block away on higher ground. She says the area is prone to flooding. Heavy rain fills the river, which fills the lagoon, and that can cause problems if it's not allowed to empty into the ocean, like today. The worst damage we saw was in uh, one of the homes, uh, kind of closer to the lagoon. They, they got somewhere in the neighborhood of a foot and a half to two feet in the residence itself. The county eventually opened a channel draining the lagoon and ending the flood for about a dozen unlucky homeowners who will be cleaning up for a while to come. The sun's trying to come out in spite of the rain, so we need to look for a rainbow. She has a nice attitude. So, Devin, if they were able to drain that lagoon, why didn't they do it sooner before the rain came? Well, the short answer is the lagoon is a protected environment. There's fish in there that are protected. They don't want to have to drain it, but once people's homes start getting flooded, they really have run out of options, if that makes sense. Yeah, they have to. All right, Devin, thank you.